Good morning. Welcome back to Crochet with Lulu. Today, uh, I've been struggling trying to figure out different projects to get you started on simple things for Christmas gifts. And I thought we would do the Granny Hexagon. Now, you can stop them at this. This is, row, this is two rows. You have your foundation circle. And then you have your first row of six granny clusters. And then you have your corners that you add on. You can stop at this size and make motifs for a larger blanket, afghan, lap, blanket, shawl. You, can, you could theoretically make purses out of this. You can make trivets for hot plates, but if you make a trivet for anything hot, a pot, pan, hot pot of coffee, whatever, you do need 100% cotton. This, these skeins that I'm using today are 100% acrylic, so they will mainly be just for coasters. Now, like I said, this is only two rows, and you see it's... It covers the bottom of my hand, the palm of my hand. So you probably, for a coaster or anything like that, you'll probably want to go at least three rows. Now your third row is gonna define your sides more. You're gonna be filling in those spaces. So let's get started. We'll start out with our yellow again, and then we'll do row number two with our pumpkin. And then we'll go to row number three, which will be green. I will do four rows with you today and get you started. These would make wonderful gifts for Christmas. Like I said, coasters, trivets, blankets, purses. These are just really pretty, pretty things to work up. And they're fairly quick and easy. They're, you know, they're along the lines of the granny squares and the granny rectangles. You use the granny clusters. You will hear the fur babies in the background. We've been outside. We've had nap time. They have. Nanny's not had nap time. <laughs> Nanny needs a nap. <laughs> so you're going to hear running and squeaking of the toys. <laughs> so we start out with a chain of seven. One, two, three four, five, six, seven. We're gonna join to make a slip, slip knot. Slip stitch, I'm sorry. Here I go again today calling things that are not. <laughs> okay, you're gonna work six sets of clusters. Each one of these is a set of three double crochets. So we need six of them for our middle. I may only get three rows done today. <laughs> Just a disclaimer. Now in between each cluster, we're gonna go ahead and do a chain of two to prepare for our corners on our next round. But we are only doing the clusters in row number one. And remember we are working six sets of three in each section. Now you're gonna to wanna to keep pulling at your stitches because they're gonna to start to ruffle up. This is, a, this is very tight to get this many sets in your ring. So after each set, just keep pulling them over. So we've done we're halfway there to finish our first row. Okay. 
but I really want to do at least three rows with you so you can see how to fill in those spaces. And we've went over our tail, so we won't have to weave this one in. Some of the other color change tails we will need to weave in at the end, but I'm not gonna do that on the camera today. So we've got one, two, three, four, five sets of three double crochets, chain two, and then we've got one more set of yellow double crochets, and then we're gonna change to our pumpkin orange. Now, as with anything that we do, we join to the top of the third one. One, two, three. We join with a slip stitch. Now, to just, I like to, you know me by now, I like to, to give that just a little bit more strength because this is our weak end because it's the row that, it's the corner that we started in and it's the corner that we stop in. So you know me, I like to just strengthen it just a little extra added. Stitch, let me take my fingers and pull that up and then I'm just gonna slip it through to this. I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to snip it. <clears throat> we're done with our yellow. Now we're going to do this row with orange. Now we're setting the scenario for the sides, remember. Or the scene, I should say. Fleshy bigs. They've been outside. I guess his allergies. I'm going to start in a different corner. And all I do is I'm going to pull this part of the tail to the front. I'm going to chain three, which counts as our first double crochet. Now, in each corner, remember. You do three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. Because we have started our actual granny cluster corner. I love the grannies because it's basically the same it's the same stitches, you're just adding two stitches. Now, because we're going up a side, we only chain one to get to our next corner. So we're in our next corner. Remember, every granny corner gets a chain three, I'm sorry, three double crochets, chain two, Three double crochet. I think this orange and yellow look so pretty together. You can make your hexagon as big as you want it. If you want to keep going, you know, it's, it's yours. Do and make it as small or as large as you want you will probably want to do at least three rows just to give you that extra color, but you don't have to go three rows. Now remember, we've got six corners on this one because hexagons have six corners. chain our one to get to the next corner.
Sophie gets so rough with Bigsby and he won't hurt her. So she, she bites at him. We have to constantly get under her for biting him and he's the older one. But she gets a little rough in her playtime. Okay, we chain one and we've got two more corners to work in. everybody's had a pretty weekend and a nice weekend we've had a gorgeous weekend here and it's so nice outside this morning it's a little bit cooler than normal here and the sun's out we've had a little bit of road work up the street not sure what's going on but um it's just been a gorgeous morning This is our last corner on this row. Now after every row, you're gonna wanna reshape your work. Okay, now we chain one we slip stitch into the third chain. And you know the drill by now, I like to slip stitch across. If I don't keep splitting the three. <laughs> that happens sometimes. Okay, now I'm going to pull this up. Gonna cut it. Just get a hold of it and pull it and stretch it out. Now we're gonna grab our green. some blue that would be really pretty to, to go in with this. I'm using scrap threads. So when you use scrap threads, sometimes you have some that's been scrapped and scrapped. <laughs> okay, we chain our three. Go back in here, and because we are in a corner, we do three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. Now this one, we have our first side that we're filling in. You know, we've been setting the, the seam for the sides. So now we've actually got sides that we work into and fill up. So there's our first corner. We chain one to get to this side. And we only do three double crochet in that side. I hear some rearranging of the furniture. I think a toy box may be getting moved around. They have a toy box that they love. So we are back to our second corner. So we chain two. I hope you'll go back and slow this down or, or rewatch it if I've not made anything clear. Okay. We chain one because we're going to the side. 
I'll go in the side and fill it with three double crochet. Pick that one up, okay? And then now we chain one, and we go to our next corner. We may experience an earthquake but it's not a real earthquake. We chain two because we are still in this corner. Now we chain one to get out of the corner and fill in this side. Colors in these can be so beautiful when you change colors. You just remember every time you change colors, you've got tails to weave in. But that's okay because the finished project is so pretty. Now we chain one and we've, we've got another corner here. I'm gonna kind of weave in this tail in this corner here. three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet in all the corners. You would think I had 10 or 15 in one living room. <laughs> okay. So I've got that corner completed. I chain one. And I'm done going over this tail. Okay, chain one back into this corner or go into this corner three double crochet chain two three double crochet these are so easy to make and once you get into making them <clears throat> you'll love making we experienced another mild earthquake it's called a Sophie and a Bigsby earthquake things get rearranged okay we've done our chain one we go into this space our last corner <clears throat> that we fill in <clears throat> excuse me in this row three double crochet chain two three double crochet we still have one more side to fill in chain one after we do this one. <clears throat> I apologize. This time of the year seems to wreak havoc with my allergies. <clears throat> chain one and then we're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that chain three. And you know me by now. I'm gonna slip stitch through this one 
and I'm going to snip it. <coughs> Excuse me, I do apologize. Now again, after you do a row, come back in and just pull it, straighten it, flatten it down. Isn't that pretty? There's another tutorial that I want to show you in a couple of days that I think you'll enjoy making. Again, it's a granny. I love the grannies. And is that not just gorgeous, the colors? Let's go ahead and we'll start our red. I'll try to get through the red one. <laughs> I can't I can't promise, but I'll try. <laughs> With the moving of the furniture. Now I don't like to start in a corner that I've stopped and started in. So I'm gonna pull this one over here and I'm gonna start in this one with my red. We do a chain of three for our first double crochet. Then we go back in, because it is a corner, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. Use any colors you want. Think of your theme, you know, what your, what your theme colors, basically, I guess. Your next granny cluster. If you're if you're gonna use these same colors, say you're gonna stop after this row. Now this time we're gonna have two sides, two spaces on each side, I should say, to fill in. Remember on row two, we only had one space to fill in on the sides. Now, the further up we go, the more sides we'll have. This would be pretty if you wanted to stop after this row and then maybe go backwards. You could do your red as your row one, your foundation in your row one, your green as your second row, and your yellow or your pumpkin orange, and then your yellow, you know, red, green, orange, and yellow. Be creative. When you make these because they are so uh, I love granny granny clusters like I said they're just very quick and easy to work up I can't say I have a favorite if it's the square the rectangle or the hexagon chain one and then now we're in the corner every corner has three double crochet two chains three double crochet and it's hard to hold this down because it does want to curl up I'm gonna try to hold it down so you can see going in each section however many colors you want to put in one that's totally up to you you do not have to 
go by any standard at all as far as color. You just want to make sure that you do your chain spaces in between to define the area that you're in. Now we're going to a space on the side, so we're only going to chain one to get to that space. And remember, on each side, on this row, we'll have two spaces. Your next row will have three spaces, and so on and so forth. Chain one, go over and get your next space. Three double crochets. Then you're gonna do a chain one, and then you've got a corner. So three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. If you want to use pastel colors, that would be very pretty. Chain one. We have one more space on the side. to a corner. This acrylic is stiff when you work with it. And so to even pull it out of the center section, it's stiff, <laughs> okay? Now we're going into the corner. So we do our three double crochet. Chain two and three double crochet. And then after the corner, we chain one and we fill in our side spaces. And don't let the tail weaving in intimidate you because it's really easy Go back and watch some of the videos where I teach how to weave in the tails. It's very easy. And unless you're gonna wash it a lot or wear it, you're not having to be as careful. But if it's something you're gonna wash, if, it's, if you're making a trivet, you're gonna you're gonna want to weave those tails in good, and you're gonna want to leave a long tail because even though you go over a tail, doesn't always mean that it won't work out in washing. Read your labels when you buy the yarn for any project that you're starting. If it's just simple coasters, you're not having to worry as much, or if it's a Christmas tree ornament. 
but if it's something you wear or that you're gonna use for anything hot, just read your labels. Now again, I can't stress it enough, 100% cotton for your hot objects. We're on the side. Try to go over those two tails as much as I can. And I'm gonna go to my other side, my other space, I'm sorry. Excuse me, my other space. And by now, it's a big ruffle. Your hex skin's gonna be ruffled just all out of shape, you think, until you get that final pull in there. And we're back in a corner, so we do three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. Sophie is so funny. She has learned how to get behind the, the furniture now. And Bigsby's larger and he can't get behind and in the spaces that she gets in. We're on a side, so we just chain the one when we're on a side. So she'll play peekaboo with him. She'll get in between the couch and the wall and she'll play peekaboo with him. He's probably thinking, what have y'all got us into? <laughs> we have one more space to fill in before we join. And before and after a space, we only chain one. And don't forget, when you start to come to the end of your row, always join with the slip stitch and do that last chain. So we chain we go one, two, three, and we go right in there if we can get our hook in there. We join with the slip stitch, and as you know by now, I'm gonna go through, slip stitch, pull through, slip stitch. I'm gonna even go through this slip stitch and through these three. And then I'm gonna snip my thread. Like I said, that just gives it a little more strength. Now see how ruffled? And it almost looks like a jellyfish or a starfish. Just pull it. Pull it, pull it, flatten, pull. Now some of the tails that I've gone over are gonna pull out and that's okay. Because when you get your needle and you start sewing in those, weaving in those ends, you're not gonna worry about it. And on today's tutorial, I'm not gonna try to go back and weave in the ends, and I do apologize. I've just wanted to show you how to do this. And it does take some pulling. Now, if you're wanting to stiffen these where you buy the yarn, ask them what they recommend for anything hot to stiffen them. Some people use the liquid starch, some use the spray starch. If it's for a bookmark 
or just a simple coaster or to set a vase of flowers on, you can use the Elmer's glue. But anything hot, you're not gonna wanna use Elmer's glue. And the more you pull and weave in, the more you're, it's gonna lay flat. Now you have all these tails to weave in. This one you can snip because remember it was our foundation and our first row. So we can, but all these others you'll want to weave in. And the, that's those two that I went over. But you, you want to make sure that you've pulled out all your kinks before you snip your other threads. So there's four rows of a granny hexagon. Do of any color combinations. You may only want to use two colors. The more colors, it just it just gives you that little extra pop. I just love them. I, I love I love all the grannies. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope you'll try these on your own. Go back and and rewatch this. Slow it down to where. It makes sense to you what I'm doing because I know I hurried through some of the corners if you're used to doing granny squares and then if you worked the granny rectangle you're gonna you're gonna find this one is just as ful fulfilling and as easy basically once you get your first row completed and then your second row completed that starts the shape I just absolutely love these I think that would be so pretty to sit on a table and set a vase of flowers on Sophie's in things she shouldn't be in this morning. She's going to get put in time out. But that's all I have for this tutorial. And I hope that you will enjoy making these as much as I have. I love, you know, I love the grannies. So, <laughs> I love the squares, the rectangles, the circles. We haven't worked a circle yet. <laughs> so, we'll have to work a circle. But... I just love these. Now, a hint, you could do it out of the small thread, the size 10 thread, and you could make the hexagons and make snowflakes. Just a, just a hint. Just keep working with it, keep pulling it, stretching it, and then flatten it out. Every time you pull it, you're gonna to wanna to flatten it out. But enjoy making these, and I hope you've learned how to put, put them together and grab your yarn stash. And like I said, any yarn will do unless you're gonna use it for hot. Then you're gonna want 100% cotton. So enjoy, and have a wonderful rest of the day. And I will see you back next time, maybe with another granny. Bye-bye. <laughs>